big moment in British politics. Um, Theresa May, um, an MP uh, for Maidenhead since 1997, today announcing that she's not going to be standing at the next general election. Um, obviously, she's been MP for Maidenhead now for a long time, but will most notably be remembered as a former Prime Minister. Uh, she served between 2016 and 2019. And as I've written today uh, on The Sun Online, um, while she might not want it to be, her legacy will really be defined by Brexit and her ultimate failure to pass her deal through Parliament in those sort of Brexit battles 2016 through 2019. Uh, viewers will remember she called that disastrous snap election in 2017 when she was riding high in the polls, but it turned into an absolute nightmare when the campaign wheels fell off and uh, it spectacularly backfired. And she lost her majority in the House of Commons, ended up having to do a deal uh, with the Democratic Unionist Party uh, to, to have some sort of working majority in the Commons. But what it did is it really emboldened those Brexiteer Tory rebels who just made her life absolute hell in those uh, in in those few months. And you know, after three attempts to try and get her Brexit deal over the line, she really ran out of road. Tonight's vote tells us nothing about what it does support. Nothing about how. I continue to believe that by far the best outcome is that the United Kingdom leaves the European Union in an orderly fashion with a deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This evening, the government has won the confidence of Parliament. We will now not leave on time with a deal on the 29th of March. This delay is a matter of great personal regret for me. And of this, I am absolutely sure you, the public, have had enough. You know, people remember gave him that speech on the steps of Downing Street, quite an emotional speech where she resigned and said she had the opportunity to serve the country she loved. I will shortly leave the job that it has been the honour of my life to hold, to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. You know, that sense of um, duty in public service, whatever people think about her, has really become um, synonymous with Theresa May, especially in the years following her departure from frontline politics. She's still um, very active uh, in the Commons. She's not like other ex-Prime Ministers who cut and run almost immediately and go and work in the private sector. She um, serves uh, diligently. She still makes quite pointed remarks in the back benches. She's championed causes like modern slavery, which is very interested in. And in this article, broken in her local paper, the Maidenhead Advertiser, she talks about how causes like that close to her heart are taking up more and more of her time. Um, but she's had quite a remarkable career, really. Um, she's a, um, a vicar's daughter um, who rose through the ranks of politics um, pretty quickly. Uh, she served in David Cameron's shadow cabinet. Um, she was a uh, Tory party chair in opposition, famously telling the um, Conservative Party faithful that they were at risk of becoming the nasty party and they needed to shed that image um, if, if they were to succeed. She then was the longest serving Home Secretary, I think from 2010 right the way through to 2016. Um, she sort of gained this reputation as a bit of a sort of icy, no-nonsense operator. Many people rise to the ranks of politics by sucking up to people and making friends, but she was seen as sort of famously unclubbable. Um, and even even attempts to sort of make her sort of seem a bit more down to earth um, actually, actually fell flat a bit. You know, people might remember that quite cringy um, one show interview she did with her husband, Philip, or um, when she said the naughtiest thing she ever did was running through fields of wheat. What's the naughtiest thing you ever did? Oh, goodness me. Um, I, well, I suppose the... Uh, gosh, I have to confess, when me and my friends sort of used to run through the fields of wheat, um, the farmers weren't too pleased about that. But, you know, she, she is driven. Uh, she, she, she's seen as a very hard worker, uh, very determined, and um, and obviously managed to eventually become prime minister uh, after backing Remain, um, but um, right, convinced enough Brexiteers that actually she would be um, sort of the Brexit champion. And she's, you know, said... You know, we're going to we're going to achieve Brexit and we're going to make make a success of it. Um, however, like we said, her legacy probably won't be um, one of success with Brexit. In fact, obviously, it was a, it was a failed attempt.
Brexit means Brexit. Brexit means Brexit. Brexit continues to mean Brexit. And in order to get the best deal for Britain, we need to ensure we've got that strong and stable leadership. The strong and stable leadership. Strong and stable leadership. I'm sure she'll tell us one day what it actually means. She was dealt a very bad hand. She didn't inherit an entirely big majority. And to get something through the Commons as controversial and divisive as Brexit, you sort of really needed that healthy majority, which he thought he was going to get in 2017, but obviously failed to. After that election backfired, um, the, you know, her card was marked, I think, for a lot of Tory MPs. And anything which might have been um, subject to some sort of ridicule um, became so. While our opponents flirt with a foreign policy of neutrality and prepare for a run on the ground. <coughs> in all its diversity, compassion and strength that were shared around the globe. The Tories conference speech which she gave in which anything that could go wrong seemed to go wrong. She was handed a P45 by a prankster. Uh, she had a uh, coughing fit. Uh, so she couldn't speak and couldn't get her words out. And obviously the uh, the slogan uh, stuck behind her. The letters started coming off and, you know, it even sparked a um, sort of mini rebellion and pushed to get her out by um, one Grant Shapps at the time, whatever happened to him. Um, but yes, you know, from that period on, her cards really were marked and it seemed that, you know, the end was nigh for her. And, you know, so it came to pass, obviously, uh, in 2019 after dogged attempts to get that Brexit deal over the line. Um, obviously, many in her party just thought, this is not tough enough. This is not what we voted for. And therefore, you have to go. Um, but, you know, her legacy will be one. I, th I think history will judge her kindly. She did rise to the occasion in many moments. You know, she won massive praise for her response to the Salisbury poisonings on British soil and her staring down of Vladimir Putin. Um, Obviously, um, one thing which might have lasting ramifications, pretty went unnoticed in the final days of her government, is this legally binding commitment to reach net zero by 2050. And whichever you think about it, it's going to have massive impacts um, on future successes and, and the country as well. If you were a judge on Strictly Come Dancing, how would you score your dancing this morning? <laughs> uh, I suspect my dancing this morning might not quite make it on to Strictly.